Good morning campers. Today I am doing a review and it's not colored pencils if you can believe it. I know, I know I should have told you to sit down before I broke the news to you, <clears throat> but we are indeed covering the Shuttle Art 88 set of markers today, though I will make some references to the 50 set. I think that's right, 50. Where'd it go? the 50 set as well which is the smaller set obviously before we get started though just gonna go through the little disclaimers here which of course I will put in the description so I'm not going to talk to to them in great detail here all these products that I'm reviewing are my own purchases if that ever changes I will let you know the prices I give that I mention on here are prices I see on Amazon or other sites on the date of review for these products. So the price that I give you today will be the price of the Shuttle Art markers at this moment in time. I'm a Prime member. Prices can change probably based on what I've actually bought already, time of the year, what kind of sales are going on. After this point, I can't guarantee that they are the same price they are today. While I attempt to be consistent when comparing brands with color and type of the products, they may not be exactly the same because there are just too many brands out there and they're not all, like all their pastel blues are not going to all be exactly the same shade of pastel blue, especially with markers. I try to give an honest and thorough review. I'll mention my, there we go. I'll mention my personal picks and preferences uh, and I'll also mention like usually what the pros and cons are for each set. I try very hard to not just say this set sucks, don't buy it. Um, everybody's needs are a little different and so basically what these reviews are are to highlight what the pros and cons are for each one so that you can make an educated decision based on your own needs. And the whole deal of number six is basically just getting at you know um, you might find some bargain basement markers or any other type of product and that's great um, but if you're not using them are they really a bargain so just kind of keep that in mind just because these markers look awesome and if they you know jump down in a sale price or something I wouldn't say go run out and buy the 88 set um, just to have them see if these really fit your needs are you really going to use them I guess is kind of the question you should ask yourself don't uh, I doubt people will do this most people are are a little bit uh, on the ball with their own personal preference but you know just don't run out and buy something because I say it's good I, I do not think any highly of myself in that regard I'm just saying and then Amazon links. If I post an Amazon link, I'm an Amazon affiliate. I get a few cents referral bonus when I put the Amazon affiliate link, which is basically marketing for Amazon. Um, any money I get, I put towards the channel and I'm, I've actually got some, most of the items that I ordered with my first Amazon affiliate funds that I will be covering during our flip throughs tomorrow. Anyway, there's all that gobbledygook. Now, shuttle art markers. These, <laughs> I actually heard this and it, it sounds pretty true. These uh, would typically were considered budget friendly markers, but I, I bet it's because it's after Christmas. I've noticed that some of the uh, lower tier markers have kind of crept up in what I would call mid mid price range um, and I think that's just from Christmas they're trying to probably recoup their costs from running sales and lightning deals and the like um, I would highly suggest researching the price on this on these if you're interested in purchasing them keeping an eye out for sales um, the current price they're at is not the cheapest price they've ever been and we'll talk about that more in a minute so we are going to talk specifically about the 88 set this is 88 markers obviously plus one colorless blender which I'll talk about in a minute these come in a zippered pouch it has the handle which is cool well 
What's funny is I don't keep shuttle arts in this one. <laughs> I keep my uh, extra Sharpies and Bix and such. It's actually a really good tote for if you're keeping extras over or you're using those markers in a separate space from your normal area. These are really good travel ones to work with. I do also have a 50 set. So I figured I would show you these. Similar handle, similar case. You open the zipper and this is what you get. So with these markers, and this is the same for the 50 or the 88 set. With these markers, you get, and I will grab a Cali Art because that would be the marker brand that I would, that and the Bianyo, I think that's how you pronounce the markers, would be the closest in comparison, but I don't have any of those, so we're just going to roll with the Cali Art. <clears throat> The Shuttle Art markers say Shuttle Art Art Marker on them. They have um, a code here. It says conforms to. I'm sure this is some guideline in terms of what uh, the actual product number is and things like that. They have the number or letter code on them. Like this one's a warm gray. There you go. Now you can see it. This is a warm gray, which is a WG-4, compared to deep yellow, which is number 32. And they are on both sides of the caps. The markers are triangular. They have um, little raised dots and ridges on the ends of the markers. There's, they're double-ended. You have the... Oh. Now one thing I will say is some of these, the lids are very, the caps are very hard to get off of the markers. Give me just a moment. There we go. So this is a one millimeter fine tip or a bullet tip as you hear some people refer to it though. To me, this is more of a pointed fine tip rather than a, than like a rounded bullet tip. And then this is a seven millimeter broad or a chisel type tip. These finish out in a nice little nice little point there. Let me pull the camera back up so I know what I'm doing. There we go. And of course this is pretty much how each marker looks. Now we're going to push that 50 set to the side for the moment. Now what kind of colors? Oh this is I meant to do this. So in comparison to the Cali Arts, the Cali Arts are more squarish type markers. Uh, the, oh, one thing I forgot to mention, the fine tip is always indicated by this little gray line, which is very similar to what Cali Art does, only they use a black line. Um, they also have some little ridges here. Their caps just have codes and numbers, like just alphanumeric and uh, they do not have the color names on the caps but they are on the little barcode areas so this is lavender blue so in comparison they're about the same size in terms of width overall neither one's like a thicker or thinner marker than the other however the shuttle art ones are just a little bit longer but when you take into account that it's like a triangular marker it probably equals out to about the same type of reservoir there's that. Now we move on to the colors. <clears throat> I actually swatched these out this morning, guys. I know, right? Like, what is wrong with me? I'm swatching out markers. I'm, uh, I'm somewhat organized. All right, let me back this up a little bit. I did swatch the 88 set. The ones you see that are highlighted in yellow are also in the 50 sets. So this kind of gives you a good at a glance for both different types of sets. The 88 set is currently going for $49.99 on Amazon, which is, you know, $50, give or take. And this is the first page of it. And then the second page, this is a 150 color swatch chart. I downloaded from Coloring Bliss, uh, which is Miss Jennifer, Mrs. Jennifer Stay. And then here's the second page to that, which is just mostly grays. So in looking at this overall, 
in terms of what kind of greens does it have, what kind of oranges. I went with what the color name was. So if it said yellow, I counted it as a yellow, even if it looked more like an orange. For instance, let me zoom in here. So this says yellow, number 34. That's not a yellow. That is an orange, at least to me. And I know my eyes are not the greatest, but that looks like an orange to me. <clears throat> However, I did count it as a yellow because it had yellow on the marker. So in looking at this, greens, you have 12 greens, 17 reds, pinks, and peaches, 11 blues. I can pull this up so you can see it seven purples, eight browns, 21 grays and blacks, which I will come back to, nine yellows and three oranges. I think I already said that, but anyway. So as usual, you have a really strong showing of reds and pinks and all of those. You have not as strong a showing in the greens, which is unusual, but I think that's because of the grays. So one of the biggest pros to this set in comparison to Caliart, Bionyo, any of the other mid-price type uh, markers, one of the biggest pros for this set is the number of grays that they provide. You have a brown gray, you have a green gray. You have CG 0 0.5 through 9 of the cool grays. The same, well not the same, but a warm gray 0 0.5 and then you have a 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, and 8. Then you have a set of blue greens and then of course you have your black marker. Now if you are someone who uses a lot of grays and does a lot of blending with grays, shading, and you're looking for a mid-range price set, this would be the set I would highly recommend. I'll show you in a minute uh, a picture where I used a lot of those grays because of this collection of grays i've been able to uh, bypass grays on some of the higher end sets in fact you know the ones i can buy individual markers so for instance blick studio markers have a wide variety of grays but i was able to completely skip over purchasing those right now because of the, all the grays i have in my shuttle arts and the cali arts have a good number but they're nothing compared to this this is I, I don't know if I know any set that has this many grays. So if you use a lot of those for shadows and shading and blending, I highly recommend this set for sure. I also recommend this set for the skin tones. These two in particular, Pastel Peach. So I, I realize I am slowly building like my ideal set of colors that I would use in almost every picture. This pastel peach is a perfect skin, fair skin tone for me. I use it all the time. It's a really good, good thing I have a duplicate of that because I have a feeling I'm going to run out of this one soon. <laughs> the salmon pink is also a good one. I use Cosmos a lot. It is a very uh, light, understated pink. And I use that for a lot of different things. For darker skin tones, you have a really good variety of browns. You have um, like chocolate, for instance. Your burnt sienna would be a really good one for uh, yellow ochre. You also have chestnut brown and bronze for the really deep skin tones. So I'd say in terms of skin tones, if you use a lot of those too, this is a good set for those as well. So in comparison to the Kelly Arts, one issue I have with this is when I originally swatched the Cali Arts, this is what I did. And I did not realize they had names on them, so I just wrote down their code. And the problem is, you have ones that are marked with a Y as yellow, but they are obviously like orange or brown or something like that. I tried to go through and mark what was what, but I'm gonna have to do another, I'm gonna have to re-swatch these with the actual name so I can apply the same logic to this that I did with the other. So it's hard for me to compare apples to apples with this kind of setup. But um, I will say in this regard, because most of the grays are together in the set, these are the type of grays you get with the Cali Arts. So you've got green grays, 
you've got some warm grays and some cool grays and that's pretty much it and you only have a couple really of each type so you're a little more limited in your grays with the Cali Arts than you would be in your Shuttle Arts. And as far as skin tones, you do get a good amount of fair skin tones with Cali Art. Like if I was looking at this at a glance for fair skin tones, you could go anywhere from here, two, three, four, five, See, that's five what I would strongly consider to be fair skin tones. And then um, you even could count some of these for some of your shading. And then you've got some darker uh, colors as well, like this one. And a lot of these are going to be browns as well. You're going to have a stronger overall skin tone set in terms of variety with your Cali Art. But for some reason, I like the Shuttle Art ones. And maybe it's just because I can... I gotten used to them and I think that's probably what it boils down to what you use the most and what you get used to is usually what you're constantly drawn to thereafter now to show and demo a little bit so in terms of skin tone colors I talked about pastel peach and cosmos let me back up here there we go so I was watching a color along the other night and I for Jade Summer January and I wanted to color the picture alongside because I've been wanting to color this one for a while. This is still in progress. Hope to have it finished today. Really like how it's looking so far. But we have out of light and dark fantasy we have this picture. So so far in this picture I have used I stuck that little book somewhere. There you are. The skin tone is the pastel peach that I was referring to earlier, and that is number 26. So, whoop, shiny. Still shiny. Okay, there you go. And like I said, I love the skin tone, especially on like a grayscale like this. It just glows. And sorry I'm sitting here kind of glancing to make sure I have this right yep so far other than the background which is a uh, playful purple playful it is too early in the morning to be doing this Michelle playful purple in the big markings which is like my favorite nighttime sky color to use the rest of these are all shuttle art so cosmos is the stonework this is a pastel blue, this is pale yellow, and then this is the pastel peach. So as you can see, you can get good smooth color. Uh, Jade Summer is a tougher, a toothier, rougher paper that soaks in marker a lot. So as long as you're careful with it and you don't like leave your marker just sitting there and letting it just soak and soak and you work quickly enough, you get good, smooth, strong color, uh, especially in the chisel tips, which I used quite a bit in this book along with the fine tips, and I had no issues with either side. So there is that one. I just, I do. That's got to be my favorite skin tone marker. All right. Going on to another Jade Summer book, because I've been using my Shuttle Arts a lot recently. Let's see here. Okay, so here I can show the uh, pastel peach and the salmon pink. A lot of the lighter uh, skin tone type colors I used in the background in this picture. Just to give an idea of those. This picture. Oh no, there's some bleak through. When did that happen? Where did that happen? Did that come from that other page? Boy, it sure looks like it, doesn't it? Huh, that's interesting. Anyway, here. I know a way to fix this. That is odd. I've never had it soak through from the page behind it. Well, that should show you right there that I have some juicy markers. <laughs> there we go. We'll just cover it up. Nobody will ever need to know. Except for all of you. Anyway, other than the stickles on this, this was colored entirely using the Shuttle Art markers. 
and as you can see you can get some really good bright color i like the pastels and the pale colors in um, the shuttle arts quite a bit i'm not a pastel -y person but these they're really kind of warming me up to that so this was entirely shuttle art this was partially shuttle art and partially cali art together they are great combination of markers that give you a wide variety of colors. Um, I was showing this because all of the fur that I did here, the little strokes of the grays, these were all grays from the shuttle art set. So you can, and the hook is as well, you have a wide variety that you can use to get a lot of really cool effects, like if you like coloring gray fur a lot, or um, hair or anything like that that would need different levels of gray they're good choices for that i guess it did soak through that's crazy because i mean it took me two hours on this picture and i cannot believe that it soaked through after letting it dry that long huh well like i said there's another <laughs> there's another good point to the shuttle arts they're definitely juicy markers so there's that now for a little bit higher quality paper, this is the smooth cardstock paper I have that basically is what I call my marker paper. This was colored entirely using Shuttle Arts and as you can see there is a little bit of streakiness but I, that was more me than I think the actual marker itself because I wasn't working quickly enough or I was working too quickly and not making sure it was entirely gone over. I could do another layer on it and it'd be smooth and you can see for the rest of it it's this is all one layer of color so really like the markers and finally I think finally we'll get to see some high quality paper this is Fantasia and I started coloring the very first picture in this book with markers it is very smooth paper. Where did I put it? Where did I put that? Okay, just a moment. I do not want to bleed through happening on this, so I'm getting my little blotter cardboard that came along with it. So, um, I started down here with markers. And these are a combination of Blix Studio, and I actually use one Shuttle Art marker, which is the Peacock Green, which shouldn't really come as a surprise considering what the, color, what the page is. So what I was going to do is actually use the Pastel Peach, and I don't know if we'll use it for all of her skin tone or just a little, but we're, I'm just gonna show a little bit of how it lays down. And I'm sure everybody out there is holding their breath, like, what is she doing? But trust me, I have not went back to this picture, and I think part of my problem has been I've been blocking it because the skin tone has scared me. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to go over it with a marker. Almost... I'm going to be switching back and forth, so we might as well. Y'all want to know how I color with markers? This is how, how it goes. So when you go to color with markers, not only do you want to work quickly, you also want to make sure that you stay very consistent with how you lay down the marker. Because um, if you don't, you can still get streaks. This paper is nice in that it does not bleed marker very much if at all I don't know if I've had any issue with it doing so and the marker stays on top of the paper a lot longer so you have a little more time to work with it it could also be partially because this marker is probably going a bit dry just because of how much I've been using it That's probably the bigger issue I have here. So, quickly, the one good thing too is that the 50 set does have the pastel peach in it. 
So let's grab another one of these puppies and see if that was what it was. I think that was mostly the problem. I've been using it so much now, the other one's starting to go dry. But like I said, the good news is for the 50 set, if you just want to get that, it does have this and the salmon pink in it. It has a good number of browns, I think chocolate, natural oak, chestnut brown. It's got a good variety of what I would call skin tone colors. Brown ochre, I think, is in there as well. Go ahead and take that side off too. And so I think you would be well served with the 50 set. Really the 88 set just gives you more pastels and obviously more colors to choose from and a really wider array of grays. So there. Looks a little weird just having her neck colored so maybe we'll go on and move on with her face as well. Y'all can see this a little better. There. All right. So see, I am moving past my holdup right here on camera. Now, what if I want to do some shading? Well, I will go back and do that. I can either go back with marker or I can go back with pencil. So one thing I did notice that is really nice about this paper is First off, the ink stays on the surface a lot longer. The Peacock Green, I've actually been blending with a Blick Studio Dark Green on the bottom of the picture to get that blend. So they do blend well with other markers, which I will probably show as well here in a little bit. Not right now though. Let's, let's stick to this. <laughs> Again, I am wanting to make sure I get smooth, consistent color. Especially when you've used a marker for a while, you start to notice that it can get a little streaky, but that is not unusual, I would say, to the um, shuttle art markers, so, all right. And of course, if you do get streaks, you can always go back over it for the second layer you will get a deeper color. So I try personally, unless I have a color I know is lighter than I really wanted, um, I try really hard to just avoid as many streaks as possible myself. So this paper you can work a little slower with. And this one to me is more about ensuring even coverage than necessarily having to make sure you just cover it all as quick as possible because I don't want a streaky face me personally I mean I wouldn't want a streaky face personally like in my life either that wouldn't be very fun but I'd feel kind of bad giving her a streaky face one thing I didn't notice with this line art is that if you go over the black part of the line art too much, it can try to smear on you just a little bit with the markers. So you have to be kind of careful with that. So We're going to just do her face and then I might show you all some of the blending with the peacock green because that's something important to know as well. So in a setting to use these, what, what would I use them with? Well, just about any other marker I have. They seem to blend well with other markers. I've used them with both Blick Studio and Cali Art, and I haven't had any issues so far. I liked them enough that I bought another set when they went on like a lightning deal during the holidays. So. so as you can see, I work back and forth with these. So just to ensure I'm getting that even coverage I was talking about. Hopefully that won't come out to a line right there. I hope not. Hope that's just 
that it's wet. If not, if so, no big deal. One small line on the face is not bad at all. Now, you can see how long it's staying on the surface because look at her neck, which is already dried compared to her face. So it looks a little darker, but as with all markers, they do dry lighter. So keep that in mind. I will work on the rest of her off camera because that would be a really painful like half hour of me trying to do that. So what are we going to do now? We are... So this was what I was talking about before, before we, before I show you. This blend work that's done down here in the greens, all I have been using for that is, and I'll get you the marker name in a minute, I had it covered up, teal green and peacock green in the shuttle art. And then the Blick Studio teal green is what I've been using. So. How do they blend with the other markers? I'm sitting here trying to think of how I want to do this. Mm. Mm -hmm. See, the peacock has also kind of held me back because I'm not really sure what I want to do with that. I guess I could show you guys on another page just because I don't know yet what I'm doing with that one. And that'll give this a chance to dry a little as well. So let's do that. I'm going to get a what book? Let's get, let's look at Mer Kitties in Love and see if we can come up with some to blend. Let's take a look here. Y'all can help me pick. <laughs> So actually we're going to we're going to take one of these pages. I kind of want to tear it out of the book, but okay, that's kind of weird looking. That's n never mind. I was going to make a comment and it is too early in the morning. I shouldn't be making that kind of comment. Okay, this is adorable. We're going to use this one. Oh, I'm going to grab actually, let's just grab this one. Okay, so we are going to work on their fins. I'm going to use my new fancy swatch chart. And then we're going to find another color that will go well with it, which I'm pretty sure will just be a regular green. So let's see here. I like the vivid green. Let's grab a Blick Studio and take a look. This will kind of give you an idea on what I would call maybe more like a mid-range paper. So, yep, let's go with a bright green. And then, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab my other bright green, now that I've dropped one. And we will go with, do, 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 let's go with Viridian. Do I have it there? No. Let's look over here. Do, do. All right. I swatched it. Where did it go? There it is. <laughs> Viridian's number 54. And then, let me, let me check this real quick. See, now I need to swatch my Blake Studios. So I don't have to keep doing this. I'll know exactly what colors I'm grabbing. Those are really good. And then, I wonder what vivid green with all that would look like. That's like just way too green green. Turquoise. Let's try turquoise green and turquoise blue and see what we get. There's turquoise green. And ah. so one thing to note, the caps on these are pretty can be kind of tough to take off. I've noticed the fine tip side, I have more trouble than the other side. But I think once you do it a few times, it, 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 it makes it a lot easier. So, yeah. And also, 
always make sure that the caps snap. This is the case with any marker, but with these in particular, because those caps can be kind of difficult, keep an eye on it. If it looks like this, it's not closed all the way, press it down to make sure it snaps, and then you're good to go. All right, so we're going to go with turquoise blue. I think that'll work. Okay. So... I'm going to start off with my darkest green, which is my Viridian. Yes, my Viridian. And I am going to work with the scales. Now, I am going to use the fine points for this because this is such detailed work on the scales. And I am pulling the caps off all three of the markers so I can switch quickly between them. So I'm going to start with the darkest color, which is the Viridian. Start out on one of the scales like this. And then quickly switch to my bright green. A little bit. And finally to my turquoise blue. Now, what am I going to do now? I'm going to go back with my bright green softly and I'm going to go back with my blue. You want to go soft with these because they are juicy markers and you will get bleed which I started to get because I wasn't being really easy with them. So just light strokes is probably the way to go. If you get a little bit out, to me it's not that big of a deal because I'm going to be covering, that's part of the fin anyway, so as long as you're not going like way, way into the next scale, I don't think it's really going to affect it. And besides, not every scale, like, you know, if mermaid cats were real, not every scale would look exactly the same anyway. They all would be slightly different, so. And you can tell they're really juicy markers because even on paper that's like a good high quality paper like this, um, they stay on the surface a long time and on the Jade Summer paper, which is a pretty rough paper that really soaks up um, ink. As you could see, yesterday I spent two hours on that picture that sky might have been one of the last things I colored, but that uh, water had been colored for a while. And it still had not entirely dried by the time I closed that book. And I kept that thing open like an hour after I got done. So, not real sure what happened there. I don't think that's the fault of the markers, though. I think that's my fault. What I will probably do, if it bugs me enough, is I'll just go back and paint the columns a darker gray in the other picture and just be done. So, so yeah, I'm switching between the three colors and then I'm kind of going over the mid and lightest colors with the very light turquoise blue just to make it look a little more seamless. And like I said, I consider this kind of a middle quality paper. And since I didn't have any examples to show with just the shuttle arts or even as a blend, I wanted to show y'all this way. Hope everyone is having a good week so far. Tomorrow is indeed Friday. Huzzah. I will be doing a flip through tomorrow with some of the new books I had come in this week with from the Amazon Affiliate Funds. So we will be sh going over those tomorrow. This weekend, I hope to do some more Jade Summer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotta make doubly sure. So, on that layer, I'm taking it down pretty heavy just because I want it to soak in. Good and proper. Mm -hmm. We'll do a couple more of these and then we'll let them dry as we go back and look at our other page. So I have no issue using these 
with other markers, using them to blend together. Either way, they do seem to do really well with that. So, And one other thing I can try on her fins is a gradient. So give me just the uno momento, por favor. And we will do that as well. And hopefully that's not screwed up just due to my own incompetence. Because I've used just touching the markers together. I've used that before, but I haven't used it like a lot. So there's still a bit of a learning curve there. But yeah, we might use between the darkest and the lightest. The two shuttle art markers, we, we will try that. For a minute there, I had stop. I was like, did I say the right ones? Is that what they are? Yes, these are the shuttle arts, Michelle. I probably don't even really need the middle color, but we're already using it, so. I thought this was a cute picture. This might actually be one I go ahead and finish out. I haven't colored anything in this book. The the Blick Studios do really well in this book too, by the way, which I know we're not talking about those today, but that was the reason I picked this one as a combo color because I've it performs great beside the shuttle art. I know that, and I know it performs well on this type of paper. At least I don't think this is I don't think this creates space. It's not bleeding as much as I would expect from create space. So you and then some of this. Alright, let me put the blick one up for the moment. I need to write these down so I don't forget which ones I was using. Oh no, my coffee's cold. This is a tragedy. I must go fix that. Alright, so what am I doing? I'm just touching the tips of these together, the fine tips. I think this is the way I want it to go. We're going to do this once and I'm going to test it. Just to make sure. Make sure I know what I'm doing. Apparently I don't know what I'm doing, or I kept it there for too long. I kept it there for too long. <laughs> that's what the problem was. <laughs> See, that's what I was talking about. It works. I don't know if I can... I'll, I'll move the camera and show you that uh, gradient here in a few minutes. So, let's just try this. That, that's a good sign, though. Alright, so I'm touching from the darkest to the lightest. One, two, three, four, five. Let's just go with five. And now we will try her scales. Maybe. I'll probably go over a couple of them until I see it start to lighten up. Apparently five was too many. So these are really juicy markers. Even in doing that, I did not give that much of a count at all. And you see how many scales I had to go through before it finally started turning a bit of a lighter color. Alright, so let's try it again. And this time we're going to just... First off, let me make sure that the dark color is entirely off this marker. Okay. Yes. All right. So. One, two, three. Dang. 
So there, that is something to keep in mind. If, if you are using this method with your markers, and you're using them with the shuttle arts, you do not have to leave them together very much at all in order to get the other color on there. You saw how long it still took for me to get that lighter color. So it's subtle, but you can still see it. Let me just do the dark to light markers in comparison. So if you're covering a wide area, this would come in handy, but definitely less is more with touching these together. I might try a different color on the Jade Summer book just to make sure I'm telling, not telling false tales here. Yeah, I like, I mean, I like that look, but I definitely wouldn't use it for small detail areas like this. You would be better served just going back and forth between a couple of different markers like I'm doing. So. So yeah, there is that. And his have dried. So you can get pretty good blends with them and pretty good shading. Swatches are nice, swatches help. <laughs> Jeez, you would think I would just spend the whole day doing nothing but swatching my markers since they seem that seems to help so very much. <laughs> okay, so here it is mostly dried. And as you can see, it did lighten up, and it is really pretty. I I just like how it it does seem to almost have an orangish appear uh, kind of look to it. But instead of me looking at it like orange, it's more like it's a glowy kind of skin tone. So that will be how I do the rest of her the top part of this. I don't know. I'm still considering just using gel pens, <laughs> but at least with her skin tone, I can. If I don't want to do anything else to it, I can walk away happy. Okay. What are we going to do in here? Let's do this page. And let me grab the scratch page from my other book. This is Stuffed Animals by Jade Summer. And we are... No. Yes? No? Yep. Yeah, let's pick her type. So we're going to pick our tights, and we we're going to do like a pink and a purple, I think would work well. So, when I say pink, I mean more of like something like this, or the pastel. Uh, oh, one thing I did want to know about these, one of the things I like about these shuttle art markers is they have fluorescent colors. So, as you can see, there's a fluorescent orange there, there's a fluorescent yellow, and this is pale purple, but in all honesty, I consider this like fluorescent pink. Either that one or the vivid pink. So they have some really nice bright colors in this palette. So let's see here. When I say purple, I want to go with... Even the pastel violet looks a little strange to me, but that's fine. We will go, actually, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go from azalea purple to pastel purple, I think. And that will kind of give us the pinkish purple kind of look. So pastel violet and azalea purple. Mm, azalea. There you are. And that is vivid pastel violet. Okay. So... Even though they're swatched, I still like to check them. Mm. Yep, okay. I would recommend anytime you're doing things like this, always, um, always test it on a scratch piece of paper before you actually put it to paper, to the paper you're using. Do, 
do. Okay. Wow, these are really juicy markers. That's nuts. Huh. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's try that on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I went, I put the darkest one on the lighter color, and now we are going to do her tights, or her leggings, or stockings, or whatever you want to call these. I'm trying to go a little slower to give it time to shift over which it does not seem to want to do. Hmm. They didn't quite give me the gradient I was looking for, but that's okay. I wonder if it just really didn't take the darker color. Let's see. Let us see. Oh no, I think it did. It just took it a while to shift because that's certainly a different color. Huh. Well, that's funny. Anyway, that's what we'll do then. We'll just go back and forth with the colors since these pinks go together so well. Now, if you see anytime I leave this on the paper and hold it in one place for too long it, it definitely wants to bleed in this on this type of paper this Amazon printed paper so I would recommend working quickly you don't necessarily have to now the lighter going into the darker I'm not as worried about you don't necessarily have to worry about going all the way to the end because it will slowly soak in and usually cover up those areas so it's so funny I always say I'm not a pink kind of person and yet here lately it seems like that's a lot of the stuff I've been reaching for which these are technically listed as purple but still I I would call these like a light pink and a dark pink if I was being really personally fussy about it So I may go back over the one where I was trying the gradient. Now see, around areas like this, I'm using very light strokes so they don't bleed into areas I want to keep a lighter color. I'll probably give her like yellow socks or something. There's that. So now you can actually see that gradient happening. It was just a little harder to see before. So again, the lighter strokes like that. Usually when I hit wider areas like that, I will go down with the paper a little bit more, go a little heavier handed, though I'm still trying to be cautious even if I'm not doing the light strokes like that, I'm still just barely touching the paper with the marker itself. Sorry, just making sure I was still actually coloring on. Y'all could see what I was doing. But I am. I am just barely touching the tip of the marker to these. These are really juicy markers. Both gradients, it took a long time. I mean, that was a 10 second count and we didn't really start seeing anything till there. So that is surprising we're just going to leave it as is for right now just because um, I don't want to risk making it darker and I think it looks okay like that so I'm about to write all this down now I want to go work on this page and I want to go work on the mermaids page I have a lot of coloring to do the next few days so yeah the this was the shed alerts well Okay, 
So we're going to put this aside and let it dry. Since evidently these really juicy markers want to bleed through to the page in front of it. That's the first time that's ever happened to me. So, oh, real quick, I do want to show y'all. It is, I guess, thoroughly dry now, but this is what our mer kitties look like. All right. So, final thoughts on these. If you like using a lot of grays. Oh, one thing I was going to show y'all. Excuse my desk and my chicken chicken scratch and stuff. Hang on. There it is. So this here was where I was testing the green and that was a 10 second count and you can see how long it took to transition. This one wasn't as obvious, but as you saw it continue down, it did transition out. So these are really juicy markers. And if you are, like using this kind of gradient, use a very light hand with these markers and definitely test them out before you put them to actual paper. So, all right, back to what we were saying. I really like these markers. I, I, I love my Cali Arts. I don't know why I tend to reach for these more than I do my Cali Arts. I still can't really explain it other than there's something about seeing the name of it at the end, even though the name doesn't necessarily match the color. Like, for instance, yellow. <laughs> um, there's a, If I was going to say yellow, I would say something like that, right? Um, but, and that, I wouldn't really call that a pastel, but... But overall, I think their names to their colors are actually pretty decent. The ultramarine looks a bit more purple than blue. So um, there are a few that are kind of iffy, but that's why swatching is important. But I really like this set. I will continue to use this set quite a bit. I'm glad I have duplicates. Like I said, all the ones you see in yellow are part of the 50 set. You have a good, strong skin tone showing in this set. And you have a fantastic variety of grays. So if you like coloring uh, people and skin tones a lot, if you do a lot of shading with grays or you use grays a lot in your marker coloring, I think this is a very good set to go with. As you can see, even with the 50 set, you get six browns and you get four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine grays. So you still get a good, good showing of, uh, oh, and the browns and like your salmon pink and pastel peach are also included. So you get a good, strong showing of skin tones and, um, browns and grays in in the 50 set so the really juicy markers really juicy markers you need to give them plenty of time to dry they do blend well with other markers they do blend well work well with cali art they work well with blick studio i've shown a number of pictures that we've been doing that with they do work with the blend blending the tip to tip blending but they, since they're so juicy markers I would use a very light hand with that and practice but if I was recommending a starter set to somebody between the Cali Art and the Shuttle Art I would suggest the Shuttle Art for myself just because like I said you get a good showing of skin tones and your grays in that set along with a good variety of your other colors you actually get four purples there too so there's only there's two you don't know excuse me you get five purples out of that has a really good showing of purples um for the shuttle arts so the 88 set that gives you like all the colors you see here is 50 dollars the 50 set if you give me a minute because evidently i didn't pull that screen up the 50 set is $32.99. So for $18 more, you get 
38 more markers, I think. I don't know why they don't do 100. Now, with the CaliArt 100 set, you get that for $49.99. So, with the CaliArts, you get 12 more markers, but you lose a lot of these grays, and I don't think the skin tones even, the, the darker skin tones compare to that. So, keep that in mind quantity, quality, uh, honestly, I think they're both pretty much neck and neck, um, but if I was going to recommend somebody try a set, I would recommend the Shuttle Art myself, just because I like using those, and I, I have some reasons why, but for the most part, it's just personal preference, so I think they're both good sets of markers. $50 is kind of high, though, guys. I'm not going to lie. I would wait for these to go on sale maybe closer down to 40 uh, I w or I would just go and get the 50 set to try $33 give or take isn't bad for that though I would wait for those to go on sale even more if it were me just buying duplicates or something but I will be buying duplicates and this set will be one I use for a long time coming until I find something else Bionos, I do not know I haven't tried those though that will be happening because those are more budget friendly now with the price on Amazon than the Shuttle Art and Cali Arts. Anyway, hope you guys found this interesting. Hope you enjoyed the fact that it was a um, <clears throat> marker review instead of a colored pencil one. If you have any questions or you have any experience with these markers, feel free to leave those in the comments. There may be things I haven't come across myself and of course I would be interested to know along with everybody else. So. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching and bye for now.